The final postscriptum, chapter three, Day of Days map, Carantan, has been live for just a few hours. You're about to hear my first impressions and see some of the first gameplay footage collected from the map. Flash out. First things first. I have to answer the question of whether or not the map is optimized, as it was delayed a full month after the rest of Chapter 3 released. And the answer to that question, so far as I can tell, is that yes, it is optimized. I spoke with some of my buddies, and some guys are still having issues with it, to include frame rate drops, and guys that have said that, frankly, it's straight up unplayable. I didn't find this to be the case. I think that it could be server-side issues, and I also spoke with all the guys that I played with in the round that you're watching right now, and everyone in my squad agreed that it was running pretty good. The one guy that said he was having stuttering issues hadn't yet reset his cache, and for those of you who haven't played squad or postscriptum before, or those of you who have but are experiencing frame rate drops with the new update, I'd encourage you to go and manually clear your cache right now. Instructions to do that are on the screen. The easiest way is just to go into the game settings and click reset user cache at the bottom of the screen. If you do that, you are resetting all of your like video settings and keybinds and stuff like that. So you have to fix it afterwards, but most of the time that does fix the issue for folks. As far as the map is actually concerned, I found it incredibly immersive and playable. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it's incredibly lush. It reminds me a lot of all of the movies and all of the series that we've all watched, like Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, obviously. Uh, as we are assaulting Karen Tan, we are essentially role-playing as Easy Company of the Band of Brothers series. It is true to that film. It's also true to real life. The map is modeled off of Karen Tan pop proper, and it is believable, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think it's really interesting to compare where we are looking at the Chapter 3 maps now uh, compared to the Chapter 1 maps over a year and a half ago. And the game's clearly come a long way. The Unreal Engine update has done a ton for performance and for the visuals, and we're all benefiting from that now. And it is incredibly evident in the Karen 10 map. As far as the map design is concerned, I thought that it played really, really well. We, I was playing as the 101st Airborne, and we spawn on the southwestern portion of the map and then clear generally northeast. The first two objectives are linear in nature. Uh, we actually managed to get the first point without a whole lot of issue, and we quickly captured that. Second point was a little bit more contentious. We probably, you know, bled 70 tickets or so uh, at the second point. You end up having to go through like a railroad crossing, and uh, there, it's like a really wide open linear danger area. That kind of turned into a meat grinder, because after we advanced from the second point to the third and the fourth, uh, you can clear both of those points simultaneously which kind of reduces a little bit of that meat grinder nature because now the enemy's defense is more decentralized and it gives you a chance to either mass against one point or do uh, you know a, a simultaneous assault on both um, we were able to capture both of those points and then our assault finally stalled out on the last set of objectives which again is a, another simultaneous seizure of two different points arrayed north to south uh, we managed to secure the southern point which is a church and then we stalled out north at the hotel the play was excellent uh, i had a pretty good match i was just playing as a rifleman and a radio man for most of it had a great squad leader a lot of communication uh, all in all there's been a lot of communication and, and just uh, a really healthy um, kind of atmosphere across the player base that I've noticed in all of the public matches that I've been enjoying recently. Carantan specifically, as I've said previously, it was incredibly lush. The developers have paid a ton of attention to detail and we're seeing the same sort of micro terrain and high quality textures, excellent uh, appearing vegetation um, that we are becoming accustomed to seeing now that we have the Unreal Engine update. We're also seeing some of the same hedgerows that we saw on maps like St. Mary Glees, um and the Utah Beach map. I found that the hedgerows in Carantan were effective at obscuring movement. Uh, they are also very difficult to penetrate, but some of the complaints coming off of those other two maps were that there was places it looks like you should be able to get through uh, where you were unable to do so. Um, I did not find that to be the case in Carantan. I found uh, that the hedgerows were pretty well designed, and if there was like a gap or a point in the hedgerow where it looked like it should be passable, um, I was able to pass it either by moving directly through it or vaulting over it, which was uh, pretty nice. Um, because there's kind of like this urban sprawl across the entire map, uh, coupled with that thick vegetation, it provides an excellent environment for kind of mid to close range gunfights. So fire and maneuver and teamwork and like voice communication in that close quarters battle kind of scenario uh, was incredibly useful. And most of the kills that I was getting, most of the engagements that I was a part of were happening at, you know, 50 meters and less. Uh, 
uh, and a lot of them were happening indoors. Um, and uh, I found that to be uh, really fun and uh, really enjoyable. Um, of course, there's armor both on the friendly and the enemy side. Uh, I kept running into the Jog the, Pan the Jog the Panzer, and I believe there's a King Tiger as well, although I never saw it with my own eyeballs, so don't hold me to that. Um, the armor is really important, although it's very vulnerable because the narrow streets and all the structures on all sides, if you overcommit with the armor, you quickly become enveloped by the enemy. And so it's really critical that one, you don't overcommit, and two, that you're supported by infantry on all sides uh, to protect your flanks uh, against those AT guys. Similarly, automatic weapons, machine guns are incredibly critical for securing long axes and linear danger areas like trenches and the little goat paths as well as the uh, railroad itself and of course all the little alleyways and roads. Um, and there was multiple times where we had like a rally point down behind a building and we had a well positioned MG42 to our front that was damn near impossible to overcome and required either air support or a well positioned frag grenade or a whole lot of smoke and fire maneuver to manage to knock that guy out. So Carantan is great. I know you guys are going to enjoy it. If you're having issues, make sure you've reset your cache and get in there and uh, have a great time. So it kind of begs the question, what's next for Postscriptum? If we remember on the roadmap that was shared by Periscope Games, we can expect more optimization, obviously, which is what they've been focusing on so much recently. But we were also promised another Chapter 2 map as well as a sandbox mode, eventually a software development kit. And of course, there's always the question of additional chapters for the game. Well, if you'll recall in my interview with Snazzy Duckling and Breeze, the community manager and the CEO of Periscope Games, they did confirm that another Chapter 2 map was still in the works, but it was a question of scarcity of resources and they needed to be able to reallocate their developers from the Chapter 3 maps over to a Chapter 2 map and get that pushed out to us. So hopefully that's something that'll be happening now that the final Chapter 3 map has been published. After that, we were also told a sandbox mode was going to be in the works. That doesn't seem like from a development perspective that it would be terribly difficult, but I'm also not a coder and I am sure it's very difficult. Uh, nonetheless, we can look forward to that, which will allow squads and communities and outfits to host different varieties of games and just give us a place to go play around. Of course, a software development kit is probably the best biggest need or want or desire of the broader community, whether you know it or not, because this will allow modders to start expanding on the game and basically add a whole new cadre of developers that'll work in different creative endeavors to continue to develop Postscriptum and make it something even more special than it already is. And then there's the final question. Is there going to be more chapters? Well, when we spoke with Breeze and Snazzy just before the chapter three release, the word was there was basically no way to release more chapters for the game unless they charged for them. Personally, I'd be happy to pay for some downloadable content if it meant more maps, more factions, more weapons, and more content. We paid 30 bucks for this game, depending on when you bought it, and we've already got a ton of content, and it's an outstanding product, and the developers, in my assessment, are deserving of more monetary encouragement to continue developing. It's not a subscription service, and we can't expect them to just continue giving us free stuff forever, and so I think we should be prepared to support them whenever they ask us to do so. But who am I to say so? If you haven't yet joined our Discord server or subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll consider doing those things now so you can be a part of our next Postscriptum match. I'm Controlled Pairs. I play the most immersive PC games in the world. This is Postscriptum. And I'll see you in the next one.